What's going on everybody? So, as you guys know, we've spent the last couple of weekends working putting this Conquest back together ever since Jake decided to take his feelings out on the last engine. And well, as you can see, we've got pretty far. We got an engine in the car. The uh, rest of the drivetrain's hooked up. We got our wiring taken care of. Most of our fuel system taken care of. So today, we're gonna move on to one of the last systems that we need to knock out before we're ready to throw everything all back together. That being our oil cooler. Now, we're not replacing the oil cooler for any real performance benefit. The factory oil cooler and these things are pretty juicy, so I'm not really convinced that this thing is, is wouldn't do its job. But when you experience an engine failure, failure like we did, especially one on the bottom end, you have a lot of metal flow through the system, you don't wanna reuse things like this. Metal gets trapped in here, it will find its way into your new engine, and that's all bad, you don't want that. So, we went out, we picked up a brand new oil cooler. Now this isn't anything special, this is an eBay buy. It's just a little bit thicker, a little bit wider, should do really well. The only caveat with buying something like this is, you, as you can tell, your mounting tabs are a little bit different, and dimensionally it's a little bigger. So. There's a little bit of rework in the wheel that we got to do here to get this thing to fit. Now we want to try to keep it closer to factory location, obviously somewhere up here. Where that is, we don't know yet. You're not going to know until we go ahead and throw our radiator, our intercooler, certain little brackets and bits and pieces back in here so that we can take measurements, know exactly where lines are going to go, know exactly where this is going to be able to sit and be able to see airflow through it. So a few things that we need to do to be able to get this thing put in the car. And honestly, once this system is taken care of, there really shouldn't be anything stopping us from getting the rest of the car put back together. Minus a few little bits and pieces. Uh, we mentioned the SAFC and the MAFT in one of the last videos. I don't think we're going to get to that today, but that should be the final step in tuning to get obviously this thing running as it is, as it should, I should say. But uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the day. Pretty straightforward. Um, Jake does have some ideas in his head of how he kind of wants to go about this, so I probably ought to let him explain that since I'm not the one designing this. I don't know what you're about. No, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> we have our factory in our, or our factory oil cooler right here. Right there is how factory sits. Okay, no big deal, right? Utilizing those two brackets, or those two holes, you gotta figure out how to attach these tabs to right there. Probably bring this down just a little bit more. We shall see, of course. Yeah. Um, there's, an there's a bracket here on the bottom. I happen to have one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and attach this kind of the same way. I have some uh, one inch by one inch angle aluminum. So essentially what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be mounting this like this, taking the angle, bringing it up, and probably bring it out like that. And we'll just see where it goes from there. Yeah, and then you said the other bracket sits on the bottom and it'll just wrap around and you'll make the same thing for the bottom. Yep. Nice. I'll, uh, that one mounts more towards the, more towards the front of the cooler out further so i'm going to try and copy that sort of design essentially bring this out here more we shall see we'll figure it out when i get there yeah and that, that's kind of why i was saying that's the point of us putting our intercooler or these brackets back in it'll just mm -hmm. it'll just give us a much better frame of reference for the rest of the front of the car sits that way you know nothing's touching nothing's rattling you know you're not going to have any issues rubbing lines or anything like that so yeah. We're going to play around with placement here, kind of play around with bending some brackets up and just moving stuff around to see where we can get. Once we have an idea for mock-up, we'll hop back into things and we'll check it out. Ah, newcomers. Yeah, pocket stuff. How did we survive without you? Thank you. 
so it's looking like you got a plan put together. Yeah, somewhat. So one of the issues that we're running into is A, having to go ahead and clear this charge pipe, right? After it being torn apart for so long, I totally forgot how little room I actually had here. There's also a valence that sits right here. A lot of you Quest guys know. I can't necessarily find the dash six, dash 10. I have to run that fitting to this fitting, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so now I have a height problem because this fitting like this, originally how I was gonna do it, is gonna smack that valence real hard. So this has to be dropped down to probably right about there. And if you notice, that is going to be a little bit more of a challenge as far as a kind of a straightforward bolt in, you know, cause I was thinking just weld some tabs on here and we're good to go. Well, that ain't gonna work anymore. I have to drop this down. I'm thinking now something more along the lines of this, right? Bam, bam, maybe tie it in again here too. We shall see. But essentially what I need to do is I need to go ahead and cut some tabs. And that's what this is for. To go ahead and be able to actually bolt the chunks of aluminum to the cooler so I can actually figure out how it's gonna sit. Yeah, there you have it. I mean, that's just some of the challenges of doing stuff like this is you really gotta you know, make everything fit with all the different systems that, you know, get crammed up underneath your valence of your car. I mean, cooling system, uh, intercooler, charge piping, sometimes you got power steering coolers to worry about and stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on up there and, and the biggest challenge right now is just to kind of fit all of this under everything and kind of between all this stuff. So, we think we have a remedy for this issue. Uh, so, we're going to try to come up with a quick little bracket situation. And then once we have everything tacked into place, we'll come back in and show you where we get. There is that option too. That is an option. So right now I kind of have uh, an idea of my spacing for the this to the tabs. What I gotta do is I gotta send this up, bolt this back in, bring this up, something like that, and that should clear. Nice. Yeah, the biggest challenge just being fitting between the intercooler, the piping, and then that, yep. huh? Yep, and that's actually a nice V. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude, yeah, the, the way these will both be V-mounted together, that'll be sick. Mm -hmm. I'm, nice. And I'm glad you went with a black cooler because I feel like it'll hide with the piping really well. Yeah, same. Well, to be fair, the only thing I could find was a black cooler. Yeah. So. yeah. I just noticed that these are offset in the actual bracket and I was just kind of eyeballing it because I wanted this to be kind of centered. And then I just decided to go ahead and do a quick measurement just for Chits and giggles. We have figure five and 13 sixteenths to the center line of this hole. And on this side, we have five and seven sixteenths. So I mean, that little bit of offset to this side, short side to that side, it should center it to like the car. Nice. And it's gonna be just one of those little itty bitty details that nobody really cares about. I care about. Hey man, you'll see car. it. I feel like we say that all the time, you'll see it. I'll see it. Even though I'm not really 100% like happy about it, but I mean it's. Hey, the biggest thing is that it, it, it fits and doesn't rattle and hit stuff. Yeah, that's that's the main concern yeah. really. Yeah, take take that. If you're gonna take one thing over the other, like fitment and it not rattling on things is definitely, in my opinion, overtakes the look. Yep. Yeah, but you know, it's 
It's the fun car, it better look good. That little bit of offset, I'll know it's there, but nobody else is really gonna look and say, oh, would you look at that? It's not centered to the car. Actually, that moron with the Mitsubishi hat over there would probably say something like that. Oh yeah. Um, he'll be over there. Like that. He'll be over there, stank eyeing you from across the room. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's just kind of. The funny part is too. I know he knows we're talking smack about him, but he's. Yeah. Just over there. He's just quiet now. Just no, quiet. They're all quiet. Oh, look at him look. You asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, essentially that. Cut it not necessarily flush on the back side, but enough to do an inside outside. Yeah. Weld here, weld here, weld there. Obviously, take this and kind of run a nice out and. Heck yeah. Yeah, and then it's basically that on the bottom too, right? No, the bottom I'm going to have to think about because, um,. I suppose man, it's not going to be that sweet. No. If you can see it on camera, that's kind of what we're working with down here. A, we need to make sure that we're spacing here enough, and yeah. then our tabs are out here. So there is a factory bracket that bolts into here that kind of comes down. But we're not going to be able to use that by any means. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of oddly shaped. So it's starting from scratch uh, on the bottom one. But mm. like you said, I don't think it's going to be that difficult. And luckily, even with our kind of fitting fiasco, we ended up... Uh, having just enough room down here, so. Yeah, I think that should clear the, the whatchamacallit. I love that every time you've gone every to put time, that on. Every time, it's upside down. It's upside down. Every time. So. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to film this bit, but just for your viewing pleasure, you see with the valence on that it is going to end up fitting. Yeah, barely, but. And I mean, the nice part about it being up here too with these fittings, I feel like we'll be able to kind of somewhat hide the lines. Mm -hmm. So you won't just see the lines running around up there. And yep. they'll be a little bit more out of out of sight, out of mind. Sometimes yep. tucking, tucking those things goes a long way. Yep. But yeah, so likely gonna end up finishing up this design today, getting everything planned and mapped out, cut, measured, blah, blah, blah. And then tomorrow we can come up here and bust the welders out, get everything glued together, and then move on up over to our oil sandwich plate and everything, because since we're doing a AN style fittings, we needed AN style fittings on our oil yeah. sandwich plate. So go ahead and install that tomorrow and get some lines ran and we can smack the rest of this car together. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, fucking Christ. Far, no one could save me but you. People do. This is why nothing gets done. I mean, stuff gets done. Nothing gets done with that. We've been here for smell a long time. Around. There are two holes drilled and two bolts placed. And yeah. Granted, this was a little, this, this turned out to be a little bit more than just our, orig our, our original plan. Because yeah. someone bought a. Fitting sandwich for the top of the fucking oil cooler. Oh, I don't know what to get. <laughs> it's a, he's a fat guy, so he's so he saw it and went, oh, sandwich! <laughs> oh, sandwich! I'm hungry! Oh. Fucking fat bat. Oh. All right, what's up, guys? It's the next day. Uh, after running into a bunch of problems yesterday, we decided we were just going to set the cameras down so we could come up with a final design, and well, this is what we ended up coming up with. There it is. Not quite fully finished yet, but that's the idea for you. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, it's just some scrap that I had laying around. Um, the, these, just some scrap, this some scrap, obviously that scrap as well. I've got this bar that's going to sit on the bottom to support the majority of the weight. As far as insulators go, just some cut up fuel hose. That's all I have laying around, so that's what we're gonna go with. Hey, it works. I mean, it's not the greatest. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a lot of the rough edges and 
then it'll actually look nice. But this yeah. is just kind of like kind of cut here and yeah, bring that up, take this, cut it here, round the edges, you know, stuff to pretty it up. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Well, yeah, there you have it. Now that we got the intercooler essentially mocked up, the only thing that's left for us to do is to do all the finish welding. So we'll get, you know, everything tied together. We'd go ahead and make our lines and then we have to go and put our new sandwich plate in. So once we get that fully finished up, we'll then tackle our lines, tackle our sandwich plate, and hopefully we can finish packaging the rest of this car back together. Yeah, it'd be sweet. What do you think? Sufficient. Hmm. Hmm. I shouldn't have expected a more enthusiastic answer from you. I don't know why I did. I mean, he called it chintzy, and it's almost like he's the one making it, so... So if anyone has a problem should, with should, it... Should we be worried about this oil cooler? No. <laughs> no. I think it's fine. I mean, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's good. That, it's for uh, not having a press brake. And... Dude, for making a bracket just out of scrap, it ain't bad. It's not our car, so it doesn't matter. I'll be riding in it though. And yeah, I'm gonna be left stranded. Did they have cars that they glue together in that passive road inspection? I think they do. That's fair. We don't have yeah, you'll be good. You this bracket's nice. I'll give you that. Hey dude, I think it came out pretty good. I mean, it's a juicy cooler. You wanna make sure it's got structure. You wanna make sure it's gonna be held right. I mean, this is definitely not gonna flex or move. Especially with that bottom bracket. I think the bottom bracket's sick. For more context, we gotta piece that bolt right here. It kinda comes down and under, and then that bar is gonna weld to there. So you'll have essentially a full box for this cooler to sit in. Also, it should be for the most part accessible to get all of our fasteners in and out. Why yeah. he went with Allen heads, I think he's just insane. Well, it's what I had available. Mm. Because we have no M6. <laughs> and there's your bottom bracket. I bent it up a little bit more because I will be welding this. Yeah. But oh, we can bend it back once it's in, right? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, look at that. There it is. Bolted into the car. Minus the finished bottom bracket down here, but you get an idea that basically just goes right under and we'll weld it right to this bottom bar. Dude, that's sick. That's packaged really nicely. And I honestly, I, like, I love the way that they're, the, both the intercooler and the oil cooler are pitched, like, similarly. I think it's sick. Well, but, I think it would be sweet if it were like, but. Well, didn't have the room. Didn't have the room, exactly. You got a valence that literally is just gonna go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So, and like using these as a reference was helped us a lot because essentially like you've got about two fingers before you hit the hood. So as long as we kept everything under these, we knew for a fact that everything was gonna fit. Don't put it on upside down again. Yeah, look at that. There's the cooler right in there. Brackets nice and pretty once we, you know, cut some of these edges and, and take some nice of the points we away. Have a we have this one to kind of... Yeah, so if you were wondering, this is what a factory cooler setup looks like on one of these cars. All right, so now that we got our oil cooler situation figured out, our bracket is for the most part made. While Jake finishes the welding on the bottom portion of the bracket, we can go ahead and measure for lines and switch out our oil cooler, or excuse me, our oil filter sandwich plate. Now the reason we need to switch this out is factory, these would have banjo bolts that run into them that then go to like a hydraulic hose kind of. This style is a little different. We need Ann, so Jake, 
went ahead and welded and fittings onto here. So we'll swap that out. Lines should be pretty easy. We're gonna run them over the top of the bracket down into our empty kind of cavity down here. We're gonna run over to our hole in a firewall and then the inlet and outlet sits right down there. So the lines can kind of hug the frame rail, come over, you won't even see them. In the process of doing that, we'll probably need to put charge piping and things back in to make sure that we're not rubbing lines on piping or we're taking up real estate that other things would need. But yeah, that's just one step closer to getting the rest of the car put back together. So by the time he's done welding this bracket up, we'll have this changed out and then we'll bust some lines out and then we're home free to finish the rest of the car. God damn it, it didn't crack the block. That oil that was in there looks pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good to me. We'll get a new gasket thrown in the new oil sandwich plate, get the new one in, and it's as simple as that. Just that bolt that goes right through the middle. I guess, yeah, you gotta make sure to pull the turbo feed line out before you go ahead and rip the sandwich plate out. Yep, and now I need a 14 millimeter. Oh, is it a stud that holds it in too? Yep, it sure is. Look at that, you learn something new every day. There it is, the sandwich plate. Yeah, the old crusty, nasty old one. Yeah. Ugh. So that goes like that. However, I gotta go ahead and give it some uh, lubrication. Yeah, I still wanna be putting nothing in dry. Nope, can never be putting stuff in dry. I might wanna go ahead and actually grab an open one. Proper lubrication is key. Looking for O-ring lube, and I'm telling everybody, I always got to use the O-ring lube, and here I am. Digging through 75W90? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Little lube goes a long way, making sure the seal doesn't move around. Also keeps it nice and lubricated, lubricated and Before. porous. Yeah, don't forget that one, too. That one's an important one. No, I don't need that one. That's fine. Which one don't you need? Just internal oil leak. Yeah, that'll be all right. I yeah. mean, it totally won't bypass the filter yeah. at all. And low, just like... low pressure's pretty cool. All right, and the last thing we need to do to prep our sandwich plate before we put it in is to change over our thermostat. Now, Mike, uh, if you are unfamiliar with what a thermostat in an oil sandwich plate does, that's why we have you. Really? Yes, what does oh. it do? Please explain to the people. You know how your thermostat in your cooling system works? That way. Cool. Yep, yep. So here is the actual thermostat portion of our sandwich plate. And so all it does is there's a port in here that allows the uh, oil flow out. And so when the thermostat reaches a certain temperature, it opens, if I can get this to actuate, and allows oil flow to move into that other port that's right here that then circulates oil into the oil cooler and then returns back to here, which is then circulated back into the sandwich plate that then goes through the filter. It's to help regulate oil temperature. Oil that's cold doesn't lubricate well. Oil that's hot doesn't lubricate well. You need to find that, that happy zone where the oil's at just the right temp, where you have good film strength, but also it's not super thick. Sick. Yeah, we'll swap that over, get that on the new sandwich plate, and then there's just a fitting here, I believe, for the oil pressure sensor. And that's it. we we'll go ahead and throw that in the car and finish up the bracket, finish up some lines. We should be good to go. All right, so sandwich plate installed, all the thermostatic diverter installed as well, oil feed line, all that, good to go. Now it's time to go ahead and actually finish that bottom bracket. Cause right now it's just kind of there chilling. I gotta make a couple marks and figure out where that bracket sits and then I'm good to go. From no help from these guys. I tried to help so many times. Jake just doesn't let other people work on his car. I helped by telling you what to do. Don't listen to him. He's a goddamn hater. <laughs> Okay, now that 
it's all tacked together and it's not gonna go anywhere, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back onto the cooler, bolt it into place, and then lay the cooler on top and see how it sits. And then if it's all good and dandy, I'm gonna go ahead and burn it, we're gonna be good to go. A little warm there, eh, bud? Oh yeah. And this is why you always tack things into place first before you actually go ahead and weld them up, because once you once you find out, oh snap, it's not gonna work. It's all welded up. You're kind of SOL. That was a good idea, Jake. That's sick. Yep. The little rubber insulators are fuel hose. Yeah. So, that's rad. Yeah. Save money. With that. You just take it. That'll line right up. Oh, dude, that's sick. All right, let's get some fasteners in this thing. Ooh, look at that, dude. That is sick. <laughs> I love it, man. Ugly. Hey, man. But it's not quite finished yet. No, it's got to be trimmed up and all that good stuff. Right. But I mean, like, that's how you make brackets out of scratch. Scrap. Huh. Pa -pa -pa. Yeah, fair. And out I didn't of scrap. even really clean it, too, which. Should have done that. Should have done that. Should have done that. But. When you only, when you realistically only have Saturdays and part of Sunday to work, you have to cut some of them. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, only being able to work on the weekend sucks. But I don't know, dude, I think it came out really good. Cooler's in. Fortunately, we're probably not gonna get to making lines today, but at least the cooler's in. And at this point, it's literally, like I was uh, saying earlier, lines, intercooler piping, radiator, yeah, hoses, much. and then you can go drive your car again. Barring that this motor actually works. Well, the guy I got it from, pulled, was a runner, but he's doing a uh, supercharged 3800. I mean, that's cool. That's yeah, a, you know, plus one for not being LS. Yeah, fair enough. So, um, fair enough. I, I can't knock him for that. Well, but, cool. I mean, I'm happy. Sadly, I wanted to try to like get the rest of the car put back together today, but like I was saying before, we unfortunately ran out of time. So that's likely gonna do it. If you liked what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see everybody next time.